thank you for coming to Productive Corporation's Two Minute Tech. Today we're going to look at creating policies in Sophos Cloud. Thanks for taking a look at our Two Minute Tech video featuring Sophos Cloud. And today we're going to talk about how to create policies. So we'll go to Users and Devices, navigate to the policy section. You can see I've already created several policies. I can see what is enabled on them. The S shield stands for endpoint anti-malware. I have device control, mobile device management, and web content filtering. Here I can see how many users are assigned to each policy. To get started, I can simply clone a new policy. I can edit an existing policy, or I can create a new one from scratch, which is what we're going to do. The first thing I'll do is create a name for the policy. This can be anything that I like. My options under policy creation, as we just demonstrated, was the anti-malware, which we're going to do, the device control, which we're going to do, the web control, and then mobile device management. And we're not going to do mobile device management as a part of this policy. My next selections will all be the things that I've checked here. If I add MDM back in here, I'll see it appear down here where I can configure it. Now I'll just follow the wizard. Which users do I want to add to this group? We'll simply add them over. I can also create groups and add multiple folks based on the group that they're in. By default, my real-time scanner will be on, which is the uh, standard protection that you're going to need. We can also enable a deep or scheduled scan. I like to call it deep scanning. We'll choose it for Saturday. And I like to do that a little closer to midnight. So we'll choose 2330. I can choose to scan inside of zip files. I can also create some exceptions. One of the things that we might exempt would be Outlook.exe. We want to scan the emails, but we might not scan Outlook itself to improve system performance. We'll click Next. That brings me down to the uh, device control. And the default setting is monitor but do not block. If I check this off, these settings all become live, and I can start configuring them. So we'll choose to disallow Bluetooth, disallow the floppies, and infrared. For secure and removable storage, we'll do read-only, and removable storage, we'll do read-only. We'll go read-only on the obstacles, deny the modems. And then on wireless, we're going to block bridge. So we still want to allow Wi-Fi on the laptops, but we don't want anybody to be able to piggyback on that. If I click on this exemptions area, I can come down and whitelist any peripherals. So maybe I'm going to block USB devices, but I want to whitelist my own and uh, those of certain key individuals. Um, so lots of different options there to make sure that we have everything working the way that we want. Again, I'll keep next, next, nexting through here. Now we're at the divine web control. So I have web control turned on, and I'm going to turn on some of these additional features. And this is going to start populating these areas down here as I check them on. If I don't have these checked on, we won't see them below. So additional security options, let me specify. And that gives me the opportunity to really custom configure this. I have some default options here, so I can say none. We're going to allow everything or recommended, which is recommended by Sophos, and you can see how they're going to configure that. And then as I come in here, we'll see all of these items are blocked. This doesn't work out too well for me, though, because we use Adobe quite a bit. So I'm going to come back up here, choose Let Me Specify, change this to Let Me Specify. And we're going to allow Adobe while keeping everything else blocked. So you can see how this works. Very easy to set up and configure. Here's where I can add anything that I want whitelisted. And I've already created a whitelist tag called Call Accounting, so I'm going to reference it here. I'll show you later where we set up those lists. Choose my logging. I can set open times for web browsing. So Maybe I want to allow folks to go to Amazon or eBay or Facebook over lunch. I can create those times right here. 
And then the last thing that I'll do is enable or disable this policy and get it into effect. Once that's done, I can control my web content filtering policy uh, whitelist from the area labeled as lists. Here's where I can add in additional websites in blocked categories to make sure that they're available, whether they're miscategorized or that's an acceptable site even though it's in a blocked category. So thank you for taking a look at policy creation. This has been Pete Greco with Productive Corporation. Thank you for coming to Productive Corporation's Two Minute Tech. If you need additional product information, configuration, or implementation services, please contact us at help at productivecorp.com, 800-726-4099. We are here to help.